Good morning, everyone. Let's have a look at another fascinating leader chess game, ID479, playing black against the mighty Stockfish 8, so quite a high version of Stockfish. Time control, it was uh, given in the Lee Chess Forum as 1800 plus 10, so a serious time control. I believe that might be 30 minutes with 10 second increments, although I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. So anyway, it's not a bullet game for sure. It's a decent time control. Knight f3 from Stockfish 8. Knight f6 from Lena. d4, d5. We have the Queen's Gambit declined, so a classical start to this epic encounter. Bishop g5. This is not the top most used move here, but it has been seen before. White is willing to sort of gambit a pawn here for a dynamic aggressive position. So e4, Leela does cling on to the pawn here. We should be drastically punished or not. a4, c6, bishop e2, bishop b7, white castles, bishop e7 unpinning the knight against the queen. So knight takes e4 is now threatened. White plays e5, protecting that pawn. In effect, knight d5, black does get that nice d5 square, but this bishop's hemmed in. Can black survive the compensation white has? Because white also has that e4 square to put a knight into potentially. We have bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, so this makes the dark squares more vulnerable. Knight fd2, as if the knight wants to go into that d6 square. Black castles, knight e4. Is this going to be pure torture here if the knight comes to d6 or c5 for that matter? Rook d8, as though saying, well, you try it, but maybe I'm going to sack the exchange, maybe. Queen d2, a6. Now, actually, Stockfish does test this. Knight d6. Will Leela sack the exchange or not? Well, she did. Rook takes d6. If we leave this knight on d6, I think it's just pure torture. I'll give you a fictitious variation where just to test what white would do if white had loads of moves available. Could do something like this, hit f7, and then crash down the a file like this with this sacrifice as an example, disaster continuation, if black's not doing anything. So I think it's horrible to tolerate this knight. So it's this sacrifice is two pawns for the exchange. Not so bad in theory. So knight c3, knight d7, and now white plays knight takes d5, which you might find a bit strange, because uh, doesn't it potentially improve the structure? Well, actually, uh, e takes d5 is played here. Uh, there might be some tactics going on on c takes, like um, a takes, rook takes. There's tactical ideas like this, hitting a8. It's, it's a bit dangerous, perhaps. So that's why uh, it seems... Um, yeah, e takes d5 was chosen. We have a takes. Now, this does straighten up the structure after c takes. So what did Stockfish have in mind here doing this? Rook e1, b4, rook a5, h6, h3, knight f6, bishop f3. Pressure on d5 has been exerted. Uncomfortable, rook b8, rook e a1. B3, rook c5, knight d7, hitting the rook, the rook goes back, the knight goes to f8, bishop g4. Now a scenic rook is uh, is is chosen, a scenic rook to get the knight to f6, knight h7, rook c5, knight f6, hitting the bishop, king h7 now, rook e1, bishop c8, as though bishop f5 would be quite nice actually. That's actually stopped in a radical manner. That might not be the entire intention of g4, but it is pretty uh, pretty radical in it stopping bishop f5 as a side effect. If we do look at king h1, I check this out. Bishop f5, say this position, starts to be quite nice for black. Black has a good advantage there, good compensation for being exchanged down this. Pawn mass is very dangerous. So, okay, g4, we have bishop e6, rook a5, rook b6, bishop g2, h5, f3 is played, 
taking on h5 gives that f4 square away which is maybe not immediately exploitable here after rook e5 because that stops knight f4 but even so this possession even this possession is quite nice for black this position here white's king side has been compromised so that's pretty nice if we go back to this uh, critical position if g5 then knight g8 gives that lovely f5 square to black we we can see this position is very cozy indeed for black with that f5 square coming up uh, this is just very very nice indeed and even taking on d4 is, is threatened there so white has to be very careful so if queen f2 black's doing uh, very well there so okay so f3 was played it looks a bit passive but it does control squares doesn't release access to f4 or anything like that uh, we have rook c6 rook a a1 queen c7 queen c3 now queen f4 queen e3 and now here is a slightly unusual looking move guess what Leela played in this position if I give you five seconds to pause the video okay Leela is willing to go to amplify the pawns basically for the end game doesn't mind the exchange of queens even if it doubles the pawns there and in fact stockfish just takes maybe underestimating the danger we've seen another example game earlier on the channel where it seems the brute force engines actually don't seem to understand protected past pawns very well as an increasing asset towards the end games now here yeah this is looking even more dangerous we have rook a4 knight e8 this is a key maneuver now to get the knight to b5 to hit d4 and it's very very dangerous so knight c7 rook b8 knight b5 hitting d4 that's protected for a moment now a nifty looking move h4 sealing the king side this bishop hasn't got much scope at all even though it went to f1 King f2, king g7. The king is on a, on route to go to over here. Bishop f1, king f6, rook h8. And leader doesn't mind at all if the rook took on h4. Plays rook c8. The rook would be kind of stranded over there. In fact, probably nearly getting close to being trapped. Uh, the rook took on c8 instead. Bishop takes. King e1, king e6. The king's coming over. These pawns are getting even more dangerous with the simplification that's just occurred of the rooks coming off the king's just coming across white's just totally tied down and realizes i believe that it's totally lost for white if white does nothing black's just gonna increase rank crank up the pressure and so white desperately gives up the d pawn if we look at this position with king f2 for example this is an example of what could happen the a pawn just gets pushed uh, and then the c pawn and then this, these two connected pass pawns are absolutely winning so that's just one example so yeah we have rook c1 it's it's like end of game basically the king comes up uh, knight c2 bishop e2 the game was adjudicated here as a win for black if it carried on say king b4 bishop d1 c3 this is absolutely winning this kind of continuation with b2 and then knight a3 as an example so in this game we saw leela clinging on to the c pawn which is sometimes you see that in high level over the board games black does tease white by you know grabbing that pawn and getting light squares like d5 later even if white gets the pawn back Black often gets a lot of light square pressure compensation anyway. So in this game, yeah, it was pretty interesting how the the gambit, one of the ideas was to try and celebrate the dark squares, especially taking on e7. So that d6 did seem sensitive. So that, that uh, exchange sack makes a lot of sense, really, to just focus on the end game and getting these pass pawns to be extremely dangerous. And that really is what happened. They, they became amplified. That does seem to be a major Achilles heel of the even the advanced stockfish versions against the Le Chasse at the moment from the games we've seen on the channel. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.